W.E.B. Du Bois. He was one of the most influential public intellectuals of the second half of the 20th century. Okay, you all hear me? I've been told I have, my students say I have a bedtime story voice, so let me speak <laughs> it to you. So I'll start over again. Uh, W.E.B. Du Bois, one of the most influential public intellectuals of the second half of the 20th century. He was the first black person to earn a PhD from Harvard University. He was also one of the founders of the discipline of sociology in the United States. It's estimated that over the course of his 95 year uh, life, W.E.B. Du Bois published an estimated 2,600 pieces across his many books, articles, essays, and op-ed pieces. But his impact and his program did not stop with his scholarship. No, he was invested in putting his sociology into action in service of social justice. Many of you know W.E.B. Du Bois was one of the founders of the NAACP, um, also the Pan-African Congress. He was also the president of the Peace Information Center, uh, which was a denuclearization uh, advocacy group uh, for denuclearization here in the US and abroad. Um, and that activity got him indicted by the federal government. Du Bois also really uh, invested in reaching the masses, and he served for 20 years as the editor of the Crisis Magazine, uh, which really was the engine that rallied and ushered in the Harlem Renaissance. It was in that magazine that Du Bois published Langston Hughes' first poem. And yet and still, through all of his accomplishments and impacts, W.E.B. Du Bois is what sociologist Alden Morris terms the ultimate scholar denied. You see, for him to be doing the type of research and organizing that he was doing and the skin that he was in in that time period, and to be researching uh, um, topics that were centered and grounded in issues of racial injustice and wanting to do something about that, you can imagine he wasn't very popular uh, in the ivory tower, at least. Hi. I'm Karita Brown. I'm an assistant professor here in the departments of sociology and African American studies here at UCLA. But uh, for the time being, you can just call me Du Bois' Revenge. <laughs> you see, I came to the academy on uh, my first year in the tenure track um, sharing a lot with W.E.B. Du Bois, and I'm proud of that. Uh, in our research interests, um, many of the activities that I find myself uh, getting excited about um, um, engaging with in my community-based work. Um, also, that skin that he was in, I have something in common with him there. Um, and unfortunately, I very quickly learned that this sense of being a scholar denied, uh, history, I felt, was repeating itself in my own experience. And I, it led me to ask the question, how many scholar de, scholars denies exist out there? Um, and what I found uh, over the last couple of years is that we are legion. But there's a problem. The problem that I identified is that academics researching social justice issues um, uh, usually find themselves disconnected from the public and from one another. Um, and activists and community organizers who are out there every day doing that good work uh, find themselves often under-resourced, under-researched, and just burnt out because they are the foot soldiers. And this problem that I identified, uh, I found was not one of will. It is one of infrastructure. And that is what the Du Boisian Scholar Network uh, 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 stands to solve. So just a quick broad overview of what the Du Boisian Scholar Network is. It is an organization uh, that has a, a, a mission and vision statement that is threefold. We are invested in setting a Du Boisian intellectual agenda, uh, community engagement, and also support for Du Boisian scholars. 
And I'll talk about what that means in a more concrete way in a bit, but I want to just take you on a journey with me about our story. So we were founded two years ago in March 2017, uh, and really what that means is a group of six sociologists ginned up a one-pager, kind of putting together a rallying call around this uh, concept of the Du Boisian Scholar Network. And we invited uh, whoever self-identified uh, uh, around that construct to meet us that next May in Chicago at Northwestern University. That is where we held the inaugural DBSN meeting in which 125 scholars showed up off of that one pager. And it was during that convening that we realized that there was a there there. We quickly moved to constitute an interim board. Uh, we are uh, comprised of 16 uh, uh, scholar activists. And there, uh, thereafter, we held our first board meeting in Atlanta, Georgia, and drafted our founding documents for incorporation. And I'm proud to say that we're just coming back from our second annual convening that we had at Brown University just three weeks ago uh, in the first weekend of May. Um, and what the Du Boisian Scholars Network offers um, uh, is not just a professional organization, it is a collective, a diffuse network of people who are interested in high social impact activities um, and putting our knowledge and research in service of social justice. We're also a group of people who really like each other. So that 2018 <coughs> meeting, that 2018 meeting was really about visioning, and we recently came off of this last meeting, and that was about how are we gonna put this into action. And I'll just let you know that academic Twitter was on fleet that weekend. 200 people came, and uh, we spent the time thinking about what our programming would look like, um, and in that room, we had the literal brain trust around social scientists who uh, do this work day in, day out. Um, I'm running out of time, so I'm going to bring you to the end. Um, so, how can we think about the Du Boisian Scholar Network in terms of what we are? I have three heuristics that I use to explain this organization. Number one, we are a trust. We literally are the brain trust of social science researchers working on these social problems that are the pressing issues of the day, like mass incarceration, racial health disparities, wealth disparities, hunger, sexual violence, right? That is what we do day in and day out. Um, and that we are intending to leverage that our, our skills, our expertise and body of knowledge and service um, to institutions, organizations, and educational uh, systems. Uh, we are a well. We are a, a, a resource for Du Boisian scholars to come and get replenished and rejuvenated with support um, and a system that works within itself. And we're also a commune, without all the weird stuff, but we're here to build community and bridges between the ivory tower and community organizers and activists. So with this organization, here's Du Bois at 90 years old. I know he's smiling down on us because he laid that foundation and that blueprint and we're just following it now. So uh, in the, like that last tweet that I showed you, the Du Boisian Scholar Network is not a swagger, it is the answer. And we are looking for partners as we move to incorporate as a 501c3 to help us think through our uh, strategic plan uh, with our uh, business organization. We are also looking for uh, partners uh, uh, who are at the forefront of technology so that the Du Boisian Scholar Network doesn't exist in a place but on a nap. And lastly, for you angel donors out there who are aligned in making a difference in social justice um, and high social impact activities, we're a startup and we're looking for that type of support too. And I thank you so much for your time. <laughs>